at Einstein and relativity, the transition, and the motto is Newton never dies. It gets to get new batteries. Hardware. So, uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. 99, 2003, from Newton to Einstein, I'm going to present some stuff I've done, and that's why it's very important to be able to build Einstein. So, um, the first thing is 710031, which is a stupid code name, but uh, blame Walter Smith for it. Um, <laughs> I didn't come up with it. I just yeah, it that's true. <laughs> Actually, this is the way the way the uh, system patches are named. So the first two digits, Walter Smith, just please uh, say it if I say something wrong. But I think the first two digits is the model, and 71 is the MP2000 in US version. And then this is for year 2000. This is where we did the mistake because uh, the other systems patches are 717, and we should have put an A for 2000. And then uh, 31 for the 31st day of the year, which is January the 31st. So this was based on January the 31st, 2000 for the MP2000 US. Uh, so it's a system patch. So it's the first system patch that was not built by Apple. What it does, it just fixes a minor bug. So it's not, I mean, you can get the previous system patch, it's fine. You probably won't ever encounter this bug. I never encountered a bug before trying to fix it. Uh, <laughs> and what I learned is how beautiful the system is. And this is the moment when you can say thanks to Walter. Um, the beautiful complexity of the memory management system and smartness of the global design. I'm going to explain how it works. Mm -hmm. So system patches work this way. So when you have a program in the Newton, your program may call function A or function B, for example. Then there is something called the public jump to MP2000 US, MP2000 German or French, or if you have an older Newton, it's always the same order. So it's always the same place. So your program is going to work on whatever Newton you're going to run it on. And then you, these functions um, just jump to, to are linked to the patch jump table, which is kind of list of functions in another order, which is specific to the model. And there are some functions there that are not here. And then here, there is the ROM with the code. So for example, if your program calls function A, it goes there, then goes here, then goes this function. This is function A in the ROM, and function A in the ROM actually calls function C, so it goes back in the batch table, and then goes here to function C, okay? And that's it. System patches are actually going to modify this. So you had the patch here, it changed the vector here. So you got function A that goes to function A here in the ROM. Function C goes here, and then calls the patch code. So this code is no longer used. So if there is a bug here, we can fix it by the fixed system patch. It works this way. So the second thing was ATI supports. So I think it is the largest software ever published for Newton OS. I mean by a third party. It's something like 50,000 lines of codes. Newton script code is just 5% of the total. What it does, it just enables storage on ATA cards, just like linear cards. And what I learned is the P classes mechanism, which we were talking about during lunch with Walter. So what are P classes? P classes are kind of interfaces. So here, I should have redone these slides after this uh, lunch discussion, but actually, storing engine was Walter's work, okay? He agreed on the T-Store interface with London Fuller. This is right? No, London Dyer. London Dyer, sorry. With London Dyer. And then London Dyer wrote this part. Okay, so it's kind of interfaces. And Walter's code does not care whether here it is London Dyer's work or it is mine. So Walter's code just works the same way. And the upper layers of the system just work the same way. So it kind of interfaces. There's the same thing with the, the cards. So have a, something called a card handler, which just handles what happens when you insert a card in the, the machine. And there is, for example, networking card handlers. Just, um, what's the name? Uh, Lantern, you know, when you have to install Newton devices to get Wi-Fi and so on, Newton devices there. Yeah. Okay, and it's the same for ATA card handler. This is the way P, P classes works. It's very smart. You can expand the operating system 
by adding new implementation for the interfaces that are defined by into the system. So now I'm going to present the year 2004-2005, Einstein emulator. So in August 2004, what we considered was that the hardware will eventually die. I mean, my Newton still works, but how long? We cannot write in the emulator because we don't know how a certain chipset inside the Newton at the heart of the Newton called the Voyager works. We don't have any documentation about this. It was designed by Cirrus for Apple computer on the contract. They refused to design any more Cirrus chipset, so we cannot make new Newtons. They refused to give us documentation, so we can't write in the emulator. But I noticed that the operating system, most of the time, talks to the Voyager chipset through a P class. So there is a, an interface. And just the same way I wrote an implementation for the storage interface, we could write an implementation for the Voyager and just have a system that works with a different chipset, like an emulator. And the World War, World War Newton conference is near, in August 2004. It was for September 2004. So we started coding. So September 2004. Einstein Emulator is unveiled at the first World Wide Newton Conference in Paris. It is awfully slow. <laughs> it took a long time to boot. I didn't even get past the boot phase because there were some bugs left. But overall, it worked. This is screenshots were displayed during the conference. So you have here a kind of monitor system that lets you know what's happening in the Newton here, we have the Newton screen. And he said, this unit requires immediate repair. Factory calibration has been lost. It will not recharge batteries until this problem is corrected. So I considered sending my poor book to Apple to get it repaired. <laughs> 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 so, um, and here a lot of debug stuff. So what I did since, I did optimize Einstein, 2004, 2005. So, Einstein 2004 was what is technically called a simulator. Every instruction is decoded, interpreted to, into a kind of virtual machine. And it simulated some details with a very high precision. It was completely stupid. There is a kind of clock into the system, which is a quartz, just has a given frequency. And we try to achieve the same precision. So for example, there is exactly 60 ticks per second. And to do this, we have to, de to do a complex floating point division all the time. So it was really a complete uh, useless precision. And now the Einstein emulator just beats at 65 ticks per second because the division is much simpler. And we just improved the, the speed by 50% or something like this by just changing this little detail. So Einstein 2005 was entirely rewritten. I mean, there's no bit of code that just remains. It uses dynamic transmission, cache everywhere, MMU caches, uh, just-in-time compilation caches, and highly optimized MMU calls. And to do this, I lost a lot of hair to optimize it. <laughs> so was it one time faster, two time faster? No, it was three time faster. Oh wait, I've got more slides. Four time faster, five, six, seven, fast, seven time faster than 2004 version. So today, it's a great development tool for Mac OS X. And this is a screenshot that Sean Luke sent to a couple of people um, with new web development. He uses Einstein Emulator to directly develop on his Mac. So he doesn't have to download the, sort of the package on his Newton. It's very convenient for him. He's very happy about it. Well, he also makes some bugs reports. So. But uh, OK, so he's happy about it. It's a great development tool. So in summary, Einstein 2004 was awfully slow, had bug left, but worked. Einstein 2005, useful for developers, is seven times faster.